What's going on? It's your boy Bowie here. And I'm back with a different kind of video for you guys. Um, this particular video is a comic book review. Um, the author's name is Ren. If I, I hopefully I'm not uh, mispronouncing it. Um, I was trying to see. There he is. Ren and 21. Okay. Um, <laughs> that's a great name. Um, so here we have this comic book called Mortal Kombat Genesis. And I was asked to take a look at this and, and give my thoughts. And uh, I'll go ahead and spoil those thoughts now. This comic book is fantastic. If you are a fan of Mortal Kombat, um, you should definitely read this comic. Absolutely. You should read it for yourself. As a matter of fact, I'll make sure that I link this in the description, okay? Because this comic book is that good. You understand what I'm saying? Um, what I want to do <laughs> is I want to read the first few pages just to, you know, highlight why I like this comic so much you know what i'm saying but let's first start with the art um i love this i love this because you know i made a video talking about how important legacy is to mortal kombat the other day and you can look at this uh this cover here and you can see the legacy Many of these characters are derived from the way they looked in Mortal Kombat 11. Liu Kang, Kitana, Melina, um, Shao Kahn, kinda. He kinda looks like his MK9 self. Of course, Cage, Sonya, and Jax, they look like a mix of their past selves from previous games but aside from Mortal Kombat 11. And so does Sub-Zero to a, a, an extent, and Scorpion. But one of the things that I really love about this comic is that it draws from all the various Mortal Kombat uh, games and media. There's throwbacks to the movies. There's throwbacks to classic games. You know what I'm saying? And that's something that, you know, Mortal Kombat fans look for. We look for those Easter eggs anytime that there's a new game or a new anything. Um, hold on a quick second. Let me see if I can zoom out real quick. Hold on, y'all. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so I wanted to make sure I captured the entire comic book instead of constantly scrolling up and down. My bad. But yeah, so, you know, Mortal Kombat fans look for those Easter eggs because we're trying to connect the current uh, product, whatever it may be, to what we know and love for Mortal Kombat, and this this comic book does exactly that. So let's let's read just the first couple pages. Raiden Sky Temple. All right, so I'm gonna try to do voiceover. All right, so y'all forgive me if I don't get this all the way right. <clears throat> get up, Liu Kang. I cannot, Lord Raiden. You must. Goro shall not grant you the same mercy. Raiden, please cease this. Liu Kang has conceded. Why, why don't you take a break? And then what, brother? We grow complacent before the tournament, and he is slaughtered. Without Liu Kang, Earthrealm will fall. Do you not have any faith in the boy? He is the only one I believe will save us. That is why I can't afford any risks. He must win. I admit, my brother can be stern. Never like this, Lord Fujin. His concern has only been exacerbated. But no, he does love you, Liu Kang. You call this love, Lord Fujin? I understand how you feel, but know this. He would move the heavens for both you and Kung Lao. To him, 
you are his sons. Just that simple voiceover. You know what I'm saying? I would do this, but I, I can't do a girl voice. And I'm not trying to <laughs> I'm not trying to make anybody laugh, you know what I'm saying? But let's just go back to this real quick. So just right here on this first page alone, you already see what it is between Liu Kang, Fujin, and and rated. So for one, we got the Sky Temple from Mortal Kombat Deception. We now know that the Sky Temple is like a, a, a training ground for MK warriors or potential Mortal Kombat warriors. And you can see that Liu Kang's been beaten the hell out of. And probably it was Raiden that did it. And Raiden's like, get your ass up. And Liu Kang's like, but I can't get up. What's uh, uh? And Raiden's like, man, fuck that. Get your ass up. If you can't handle me, you're not going to handle the outworld warriors. They're going to whoop the shit off you. That's basically what he's saying. And not only do we see a different kind of Raiden because, you know, let's, let's look at how Raiden has been portrayed. He's been portrayed as the benevolent you know, super wise, you know, thunder god who, you know, he can be sad and he can definitely be angry, but is otherwise relatively, you know, relatively calm and stuff like that. This Raiden's not calm. Well, he kind of is. This Raiden is worried. He is concerned. He's dishing out tough love. So now we have Raiden having a little bit of an attitude not because he's an asshole, but because he wants Earthrealm to be victorious in Mortal Kombat. You know what I'm saying? And then, then we have Fujin. And Fujin's inclusion is not only a throwback to, oh shit, there's Fujin, but we see sort of a bad cop, good cop dynamic here between Raiden and Fujin. Fujin's like, he, you know, it's all right. He, he love you. He just trying to, you know what I'm saying? It's almost like, <laughs> it's like when your parents be getting at you, right? Let's say you, you, you mess up and your dad is disciplining the shit out of you. And the mom comes in and is like, do you have to be so rough on him? And dad's like, hell yeah, he got to be prepared for this world. You dig what I'm saying? And then mama comes in and tries to soothe things over afterwards. That's the dynamic that we have here. You know what I'm saying? Also, let's look at Liu Kang. Liu Kang's, you know, caricature is different. Instead of him being this stoic, wise monk who's just destined for greatness and heroics, this person's full of doubt here. This person is, you know, He's not the Liu Kang that we know. He has to develop into that person. You see what I'm saying? And showing that kind of character development is what allows people to become attached. And so you can see the character development beginning with Liu Kang. You know what I'm saying? He's getting his ass kicked. You know, because Raiden believes he's destined for greatness. And, uh, you know, you see the doubt right here, but you can tell that Fujin and Liu Kang do have a bond as well. And Raiden and Liu Kang have a bond as also. Now, later in the comic, you, you find out why Raiden's being so hard on Liu Kang. You know what I'm saying? And of course, it's connected to events in the Mortal Kombat story. But just from these first couple pages, bruh, you can see that uh, you can see what the hell's going on. You understand a little bit of why it's happening. You, you may not know what the stakes are. Like if someone was brand new to Mortal Kombat and they didn't know anything about Shao Kahn or Outworld or nothing like that, somebody might look at this and be like, damn, Raiden's sort of an asshole. You know, thank God for Fujin. And you could see Liu Kang feeling a little bit better. This would pull people in. 
You know what I'm saying? So what I'm saying is one of the biggest strengths of, of this comic is the dialogue. The dialogue not only advances the plot in an efficient way, but it also develops character. It shows their motivations. And that's not just true for these guys. It's also true for, you know, Katana. So here you have Katana here, obviously, doing her thing. And here's Melina and Shao Kahn. You know what I'm saying? And there's Shang Tsung. And, you know, I don't want to spoil too much of this now. But you can already see. You can see what's going on here. You know what I'm saying? And look, you have Shang Tsung sort of serving a fatherly role to Melina a little bit. We don't know if he's trying to deceive her or if he genuinely cares about her. We don't know. And she definitely don't know. You know what I'm saying? But you can see a different side to Shang Tsung, even though you have this duopoly here. Now, in the end, you know, I, I already spoke with the author a little bit over YouTube and I gave him some of my thoughts. And one of the criticisms that I offered was that, you know, I wanted to see bright colors and stuff like that. But as I'm looking at this comic now, I actually take back that criticism and I'll tell you why. Notice, this is more grayscale here when you have Fujin, Liu Kang, and Raiden, right? But then, Katana, look at the colors here. You got this bluish purplish hue going on here, letting you know we're in a new setting. And as a matter of fact, this is like Outworld Purple from Mortal Kombat 2. So you could tell you not in Earth Realm no more. So as much as I would have liked to see full color animations, you know, with everybody, I actually like this a lot because the color is being used to convey a theme and to convey setting and all that good stuff. And there's still effects on particular colors, like with the soul stuff. You can see that uh, Shang Tsung has the green effect on his. Now look, look at Netherrealm. Notice we went from Outworld, Netherrealm is red. You see what I'm saying? So color is being used very magnificently here and is being used purposefully in order to convey um, the setting. So I actually take back that earlier criticism. I think the use of color is really good. I do think that once the tournament begins, we'll probably get all this kind of color, but even if we don't, I get it. But nah, we, we, this is good. This is good. Um, I'm very excited to see a future comic. Um, the one other criticism I had noted is wasn't even a real criticism. It was just sort of a warning. Um, in the story modes of Mortal Kombat games, and this is going all the way back to MK versus DC, um, you never had any reason to believe the bad guys are going to win. Very seldomly. Because what did we watch? We would watch the bad guys get their asses kicked time and time and time and time and time and time again. Everyone that was evil, they'd lose matches, straight up. Look at how many L's characters like Baraka, Reptile, and Ermac have taken over the Mortal Kombat series. You know what I'm saying? Them motherfuckers had to wait all the way until Mortal Kombat uh, 1 here in order to even be represented in the story mode as playable characters. And, th and we're just now seeing them get some victories after they became good guys. And so we've seen in the story modes where the bad guys are constantly losing like every match. You know what I'm saying? This makes them look weak. It makes them look incompetent. It doesn't, it, it takes away their value as a threat. You know what I'm saying? And so one of the things I warned about in a next, in a future uh, 
issue of the comic is, hey, please don't do what the story mode has done and have the good guys just constantly whooping on all the bad guys all the time. You know what I'm saying? And I'll, I'll uphold that. It, it, and again, it's not even a criticism. It's just more of a, a hope that, hey, please don't have these bad guys losing every damn match. You know what I'm saying? But all in all, I highly recommend this comic. Highly, 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 highly recommend this comic. You know, the the illustrations are amazing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the characters are easily recognizable. They look how they looked from games, past games. Um, the dialogue establishes the characters and the motive and the plot. It does everything it's supposed to do. Matter of fact, Netherrealm needs to be paying attention. You know what I'm saying? And the story is cohesive. They also made a lot of changes, little small changes that make a lot of sense. Like the change of including Fujin and Raiden in Liu Kang's training at the Sky Temple. That's a change that makes a lot of sense. You know what I'm saying? Deciding to alter Raiden's char character as, you know, from a benevolent, almost like protector to you know hardened warrior that gives tough love who also happens to be a thunder god that's a fantastic change that makes sense and it pushes the plot along and there's a lot of little small changes like that throughout this comic that i don't want to spoil so if i were you i would check this out you dig what i'm saying but uh thank you ren for reaching out to me and looking at my other video um I very much look forward to reading any more comic books that you put out because this right here is fire. I've been an MK fan since the 90s. You dig what I'm saying? I've watched all the movies and the media and all that good stuff. This right here ranks right at the very top. All right. So this definitely gets uh, a thumbs up from me. Four thumbs up if I was Goro or a Shokan. You dig what I'm saying? <laughs> but anyway, um, I appreciate y'all for watching. Please check out this comic book. All right. And uh, I'll catch y'all later. One.